as a core political philosophy of the Enlightenment. Now, uh, um, well, some people might say, but no enemies to the right. A lot of you guys spend plenty of time attacking mainstream conservatism, attacking uh, what many people call, you know, con Inc., going after, you know, I don't know, the Sean Hannity's of the world. Isn't that a betrayal of your very principle? Yeah, I mean, th that is a problem. The um, yeah, the uh, my contra temps with with Dreer is arguably that because obviously Dreer is mm -hmm. on the right. I mean, he's not on the left. I mean, so he must be on the right. Uh, and I feel a little bit bad. Um, in fact, uh, my, my mother, who is a big Dreer fan, criticized me for this. And my oh, no. once was, uh, was well, she's 85 and she reads all my stuff. So, you know, there you go. Uh, but she said, you criticized me for this. And I said, well, the principle is that wolves in sheep's clothing should be called out for being wolves. And so I think the, the uh, somewhat contradictory tactical principle there is that these people are holding back the right. So they're not enemies in the sense that they're uh, that they're friends of the left. I mean, you know, the, Rod Dreher is never going to be friends uh, with the left, not because he doesn't want to be. He's very happy to suck up to people who are kind of in the moderate left, but they would never accept him. And but these people and Con Inc. and Sean Hannity or, or what have you, I don't really watch any TV, so I barely know who Sean yeah, Hannity is. <laughs> but um, yeah, they, they uh they are are tactical enemies in the sense that they prevent us from achieving our overall goal, which is winning against the left. And so it's an unfortunate necessity that such obstacles have to be cleared out of the way. Uh, that's just a you know, necessary part of political life. I mean, I wish it were differently that everything could be handled uh, sub rosa quietly in an efficient way, but that's just not the way humans interact with each other. So it has to be done, but I think it needs to be in every instance carefully scrutinized as to whether it's necessary and whether you're doing it for useful purposes or for some other purpose, like self-aggrandizement or because attacking the left is difficult and dangerous and attacking someone else on the right isn't difficult and dangerous. And it gives you that sweet dopamine hit when, you know, the Twitter likes go up, uh, you know, I mean, you have to consider why you're doing it. Uh, but it, it, it sometimes it just has to be done. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think there's a, a important uh, delineation there. You know, there are some people, uh, you know, Mitch McConnell who are just like malicious, right? Like there, I think there's, oh. I, I've, I, I think they deserve, you know, your ire. I think they are completely controlled opposition. They're worse, you know, they're they're actively taking steps to to harm the right. Um, and I don't think that they they qualify as the right because their their job is to to control it, not to actually lead it. They have no actual intention of bettering the lives of the people who they're supposed to be representing or or, or leading. And so I don't feel bad going after those kind of people at all. There are other people um, who, like you're talking about maybe with Rod, you know, who have good intentions and uh, in, in many ways could be aligned, uh, but there's a tactical issue, right? Like you're talking about that, that is a serious problem that continuously holds up the right. And if you just let it sit there, then it's a, then it's a serious problem. And in those cases, it's better, if possible, to come alongside and make it a, a teachable thing rather, you know, even if it's public, rather than maybe a direct attack on intentions, um, which which I think, you know, I don't think you made any attack on intentions there. But I think that's really important for people because the more I run into these people, the more I interact with a lot of these people, the more I am surprised how many I think genuinely just didn't don't understand the problem. The, the, like it's very easy, I think, maybe from some, kind of our corner of the Internet that's been a little more on the on the edge of kind of the theory stuff and, and, and what's going on to, to say, oh, every everyone like this is just completely controlled opposition. They're they're disingenuous. Uh, they're just grifting, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, fair. There are there are people who do that. I'm not saying there aren't, but I'm just saying you'd be surprised at how often in those interactions people just genuinely didn't understand a misstep they were making and how a, 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 a correction from someone who has the right ant smell, who, who is on side, is actually very useful and is actually taken on board for those people uh, when they feel like it's coming from the right place. I think that's absolutely right. And I think that as the right gains power, which of course, I mean, this is probably beyond the scope of our conversation today, but but I maintain that that 
is is likely to happen in the near future, these kind of conversations become more productive. They build on themselves. I wouldn't quite go so far as to say you'd see some kind of preference cascade, but I think you would see more productive unity on the right than you tend to see now. And part, I mean, this is part of the problem of being a fractured and largely uh, not defeated, but you know, a, a relatively powerless group that you tend to have arguments among each uh, among yourselves. I mean, famously, uh, Eastern. I mean, I'm half Hungarian, and uh, uh, my grandfather was was heavily involved with the Hungarian emigre community. That is, emigre meaning post people who left after the communists took over in 1945. And uh, and you know, the, the joke used to be that emigre arguments were so vicious because the stakes were so low. <laughs> you know, and so you know, I mean, my grandfather didn't. You know, he was a he was a very wise man and didn't indulge in these kind of things. But a lot of people did, and so I think there was a problem like that on the right. I think, weirdly or paradoxically, having more power encourages grown up behavior. So let's hope that's true. Yeah, more to lose means you actually have to make social negotiations in a way that those with just nothing to lose don't. Yes. Um, there, there's only pure spiraling. Uh, in, in some of those situations.